Hey guys, right now we are going to have a look at file management from the command line. And pretty much everything is a file in Linux. We have normal files, we have uh, directories, we have storage devices, we have links and so much more. Now, looking inside the current directory, I'm going to do a directory listing right now. And uh, I've got a couple of files over here. Everything is a file in Linux. So you can see that uh, there, are, there are some obvious uh, colorization differences. So looking at file A over here or file one over here, and then compared to file two, you can see that they are very different looking. Similarly, you could see that uh, compared to my program one and my program two, they are very different, and directory A and directory B are very different. And if you want to get more information about a file, you could use ls-l. And valuable clue over here when you do a long listing is the value of the first bit. So if it's a D, it tells me that it's a, um, it's a directory. Uh, and you can see that even though it's called directory B, um, it's a normal file because when you have um, when, when you have the value of the first bit over there, it's just a dash. It means that it's a normal file. So you can see that file one is indeed a normal file, unlike file two, which is a directory. Now moving on over here, we have uh, my program one, and my program one um, again, it's a normal file. And at the bottom over here, my program two is a link file. A link is a special kind of file that points to another file. So I can access my program one under two names, my program one, and also my program two, as you can see over here, points to my program one. Other than that, we also have block files. Block files are special files that represent real physical storage devices. So let me go and show you an example of a block file. So I'm going to do a directory listing against dev BDA. Look at the value of the first bit over here. It says B. This tells me again the type of file. Now, apart from that, guys, uh, we have the file command that could help you determine um, the file type. So in Linux, extensions don't matter. So if you come across a file in your Linux file system that ends in .exe, your system doesn't care about the fact that it ends in .exe. The file content determines the file type. So to help us in that case, we have the file command. So I'm going to run the file command against uh, file 1. You can see it's an ASCII text file. Let's go and do it against file 2. And over here, it tells us that it is, in fact, a directory. Let's go and run it against uh, my program one. And you can see right now, it's a shell script. It's an ASCII text executable. And compared that to, uh, to file two over here, you can see that it is a symbolic link to program one. Now, some of the more basic file management commands uh, are as follows. Uh, just some of them, and there are so many. MKDIR, you use this to create a directory. So if you're wondering how I created the directory, uh, directory A and file 2, which we know now is a directory, you can make use of the MKDIR command. So I'm going to go and organize uh, my work. I'm going to create a documents directory. And you can see that I did make use of an uppercase D. And that is because file names in Linux are case sensitive. So if I try to type in uh, CD against documents right now, you'll see that it won't be able to find it because it's not called documents with a lowercase D. And this is where I find that tab completion really helps because you don't have to go and type out every single character. And also tab completion for me allows me to, uh, to um, avoid typos, to avoid spelling mistakes. So what I could do is that uh, one more directory that I'm going to create is uh, data with a capital D. Now if I type in CD to change directory and I'm going to use uh, a capital D over here and I hit tab, nothing's going to happen because we don't have sufficient uniqueness. I'm going to make this more unique right now by putting in an O afterwards. Now, I'm way too lazy to type out the remaining characters. So all that I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to work more efficiently. I'm going to tab complete it because we have enough uniqueness. So you can see that it has tab completed to the documents directory. So let's go into that uh, directory right now. So what I would like to do at this stage, guys, is that I want to copy a file into this directory. So in Linux, we have the cp command. So I'm going to say cp, and now you have to specify what you want to copy and where you want to co copy it to. So I'm going to copy a file called etsy f is tab, and I'm going to copy that to my current directory. And again, I've got a, a dot over here. A period represents your current directory. So I'm saying, let's go and copy the FS tab file that is inside of the Etsy directory. And where we're going to copy it to is right here inside of this directory. So let's go and hit enter over there. And now we can do a directory listing. And you can see that I've got the FS tab file copied. If you wanted to delete a file, you could make use of the rm command. So simply rm and then the name of the file, and there you go, it's deleted. It's a non-interactive deletion. It's not going to prompt you whether you are sure, and there's also no uh, recycle bin or trash bin for you to go and recover your files. So once something has been deleted, it's gone. Let's go back to my home directory. The directory that uh, I'm originally placed in when I logged in is the home directory. 
So let's go and type in CD right now. And if you want to find out the directory that you're working in, type in PWD, which is for print working directory. So a directory listing one more is what we are going to be doing. And you can see that we have uh, the data directory. Now let's go and use the rm command to delete that directory. So I'll say rmdi or rm data, and you can see over here that it says can't remove data, it is a directory. And we have another command called rmdir, which is used to delete directories. However, it can only be used if a directory is empty. So let's go and use rmdir against data. And again, we're going to tab complete this. And you can see transaction was successful. The job is done. Because in the absence of any kind of feedback, assume that the command completed successfully. So at this stage, guys, um, the data directory has been deleted. Now we're going to try and do the same thing right now with the documents directory. So rmdir, and we're going to try and delete documents right now. And it says, OK, well, that is fine. Because again, it was empty. If you have a directory with content, and this can populate a directory right now. So we're going to copy my program one. And we're going to copy that into a directory called file2. Remember, file2 is a directory. So let's go and verify the contents of uh, the file2 directory. We can see that my program one is inside of that. So let's go and use the rmdir command right now to go and delete file2. And you can see that it says, can't do that. Why not? Because it's, the directory is not empty. So are you telling me that what I have to do is uh, go into the directory, clear out its contents, and then go ahead and delete the directory? Well, pretty much that's what it's telling you. However, you can make use of another command. You could make use of the rm command in that particular case. Now, remember I told you that options influence how the command is executed. Now, in this case, we have a, a very common option that a lot of commands make use of. It's called r. r stands for recursive, which means that we're going to apply the instruction to an object and all of the objects below it. In other words, we're going to apply that to a directory and all of the files below that directory. So let's go and try and delete uh, file2 in this way. So guys, what's going to happen right now is that it's going to delete file2. However, file2's got contents. All of the contents are going to be deleted as well. Now, it's only fair that I show you how I created this link over here, the special file where the value of the first bit is an L. And that is the ln command. The ln command is used to create links. So what I'm going to do is create a link that points to my program 1. And the link has been called my program 3. So again, just to speed things up and to avoid any typos, I made use of tab completion over there. So if you think that I typed out every single character, oh, you are sorely mistaken. So let's go and have a look at the contents of that directory. And you can see that uh, in this case, I created a link. Now, how I know it's a link is because I know that the link count has been increased because we have two types of links. The link that I just created right now is called a hard link. The other kind of link that I could create is a symbolic link, also commonly known as a soft link. Now, the cool thing about these symbolic links is that they could point to files on other file systems. They can also point to directories. And very often, we could use that just to sort of uh, um, truncate the path to make it a lot easier to, uh, to access certain files in certain directories instead of having these long paths. So let's go and create a symbolic link right now. And we're going to say ln-s. And we are going to be creating a symbolic link that points to um, my program one, and it's going to be called my program three, or my program four, rather. So now when we do a directory listing, you can see that it does indeed, my program four, it does indeed have an L as the value of the first bit, as opposed to my program three. Now, both are links, and I know how to tell the difference. Let me just go and give you a bit of a clue over there. Yeah, that number. As opposed to the one at the bottom, which is my program four, which is a symbolic link. And again, you can see the value of the first bit. And there's, I mean, there's a strong visual indicator over here that my program four points to my program one, as opposed to my program three. No strong visual indicator there. So guys, there are lots of commands that I could show you right now as to how we would go about doing file management. It's way beyond the scope of this particular video. However, we have lots of learning material available for you. So I would encourage you to explore just that.